I guess Lindsay here with Starbuck Family Farm. This evening I'm picking green beans, so I figured I would bring you guys along to sort of give you a bit of an update of how the garden is doing. Um, we did recently finally get some rain, which has been a really, really big concern this year. Um, you know, in the spring it was extremely wet. It delayed us on planting the garden by several weeks, and then now it's extremely dry, so it's kind of you know, one extreme to the other. Um, thankfully, this property does have a tendency to stay wetter. So when we do get a good rainfall, it seems to, the land seems to really soak it in and sequester a lot of that moisture for us, making it so then that way we don't have to worry so much about keeping the garden watered, um, which has been a huge blessing since, you know, it's been so dry this year. <clears throat> um, so here is some of our green beans here. Um, I do plant my beans a little bit differently than most people. Um, I just sort of shove them into like a block formation um, where every like two square inches is a bean plant. Um, so it ends up creating a pretty thick um, row of beans and the beans do really well with doing like the buddy system. Um, so here is some of the beans here, um, which, you know, obviously I need to pick. Um, but so it's very hard to show on camera like how many beans are on a plant because everything is just, it's all green. Um, so on the fence line here, I do have some lima beans coming up. I had very poor germination this year with lima beans. Um, I'm not really sure why. It could be bad seed. It could be something with the soil. It's kind of hard to tell when it's only our second year growing a garden in this place. Um, so, you know, if you're feeling discouraged and it's like your first or second year gardening, just know that as time goes on, it does get easier. It's easier to read your soil and to understand what's happening. So if things are, things are going terribly wrong, don't feel bad. Um, happens for everybody but so here is the other row of green beans that I have this row here is about two weeks older than the other row because when I planted the other row that's when we had a lot of moisture and then the slugs came and they ate off all of the plants like I said don't feel discouraged if things don't go well your first time gardening um, thankfully I had enough seed to replant that entire thing um, so that bed over there is actually um, like I said, about two weeks behind this one here. So that's why this one here is, they're about the same width um, in terms of what was planted. But this one here is just way more lush because it's simply, you know, two weeks older. Um, so this part here, I actually already picked beans in this area here, which I didn't get a whole slew of them. I mean, I got a nice, nice handful there. Um, but I did actually just pick on Sunday. So how I end up getting a lot of green beans off of my plants is I actually pick the beans when they're really, when they're really not that huge, you know, that piece of grass. So when they're about this big, that's when I pick them. Um, even down to being about this size here, which is not very big. A lot of people will wait till their beans are, you know, like six to eight inches long because that's when they're more done. Um, I found that if you do it that way, you don't get as big of a harvest throughout the entire year. Beans are a plant that the more you pick it, the more that it actually produces. So I try to pick them, you know, once they're about, I'd say anywhere from four inches and up in length, that's whenever I start picking them because then it makes it so the plant goes, oh crap, something ate my beans, something ate my beans, something ate my beans, and they'll keep producing flowers, keep producing beans, because ultimately a plant's entire existence and desire is just to create seed for future generations. So in that way their genes will keep getting passed down again and again and again. So if you keep basically taking the seed material from the plant, they're naturally going to try to, harder to create more viable seeds for future generations. So that's my big tip for beans, because I get a ton of beans whenever I plant them. Um, so I'm actually still eating off of beans that were grown and harvested in 2021, because I really like doing beans. Um, but So I have some pole beans growing up the side here of this trellis right here. Um, those are just starting to produce beans, and I got a really, a really cool one. So this bean here, it is a rattlesnake bean. So as you can see, it's got, I don't think the camera's going to focus on it. Mm, that's close enough. Um, it's got uh, some variegations in it and striping. So there's some purple and some greens in it, which is really nice because it makes it so it kind of jumps out. And the leaves are um, kind of like a purplish, greenish hue. To them on some of them so it is it is it is nice to have some visual differences um, and things like that so but I also want to show you guys how the brassicas and the squash plants are doing um, our tomatoes are doing well 
they are, you know, there's not really much you can tell in there. It's just a big jungle of tomatoes. Some of them have started growing up into the fence and on top of the fence, which is a four foot fence. So they're really starting to get large. They're really starting to take off. Um, but as are the squash plants that are here. So this is all some different types of summer squashes um, and zucchinis. So they are all doing very well. We've had fried zucchini a couple of times. Um, well, we had fried zucchini once and we've sauteed up some zucchinis and some summer squashes too. So that's been a nice, nice treat for dinner. Um, so then this here is some more summer squashes. Um, part of the reason why we planted so many summer squashes is because Tracy and I absolutely love them. We like to dice them up and freeze them for winter time so that way we can saute them then. But also because our animals love to have different squashes and zucchinis and things of that nature, it also is good for them. So the goats enjoy them, the chickens enjoy them, um, even our dogs like them in their dog food. So it's all a win-win. Um, and then along the fence line here, these are all pole beans that are starting to grow up into the fence. Um, here in the next, I'm going to guess probably, I would say probably the next two weeks or so, these pole beans should start producing because some of them have little flower starts coming on them. So that'll be, that'll be pretty. I think bean flowers are actually really quite pretty. So I'll post some pictures to my, uh, to the farm page on Facebook. Um, the Storybrook Family Farm is what we have on Facebook. Um, so I'll post pictures up there of different things as they flower because I, I really like the way that things look. Um, so, and then over in here, we have our brassicas, um, which is the broccoli and cabbage family, um, which has kale, kohlrabi, things of that nature. So all of our kale is actually looking really, really good. Um, there is some pest damage, which, you know, is pretty normal to have holes in it and stuff, especially when you, we have a bunch of baby turkeys that are running around by the garden right now and they're making all sorts of ruckus. Um, but so the kale is all doing really well. Um, and then down here, we have an assortment of different other brassicas. Somebody lost the labeling list of planting seeds, so things are a little screwy, but that's okay. Um, so in here we have what looks to be some cabbages. So these are starting to head up a little bit. Um, I do think that these here are collard greens. If anybody can positively identify any of this stuff, please let me know. Um, I've never grown collards before. I've always wanted to. I've eaten collards and I like them, but I'm not sure if these are collards or not. So this is the underside of the leaf here. Um, and there's that. So I think that's what that is. Not positive though. It could be collards. It could be, um, I don't think it's cabbage. It doesn't look like cabbage. It's not right for kohlrabi. It could be um, Brussels sprouts though. So I don't know. Um, and then down further, we have more summer squashes, um, more pole beans, and then down in here, everything starts looking really sad. So I think what's going on down here is this area of the garden from here down where everything looks kind of, kind of really, look at the bug damage on this. It looks like Swiss cheese. Um, I think that what happened down in here is because this area does not get any shade. Um, so there are, I'll flip you guys around. So there's the, some turkey babies, but those big black walnut trees there, they actually cast a lot of shade into this part here of the garden, this front part. But the shade ends right about in here. Um, so then everything that is down further, as you can tell, it looks very different. Um, everything seems to kind of, I'll spin you back around. Everything seems to essentially like drop off in terms of the quality of the grass, um, the quality of the soil, how thick and dense of clay it is versus how much topsoil is up further. Um, we've had worse germination issues down this way. Um, so, you know, up there, all the summer squashes look fantastic. Then you get to right about in here where there's no longer any shade at all throughout the day and everything starts getting really bleak looking. So I definitely think that my theory of that gardens need some shade I definitely think this kind of kind of leans more towards that. Um, when we lived in town, my garden had a bunch, both of my gardens, the only, most of our entire quarter acre lot was shaded. Um, at least had part shade throughout the day. Um, so I really tracked it and figured out like what did well in s certain shady areas, what did better with like afternoon sun or morning sun, things of that nature. So in doing that, I think that I had 
kind of came to the conclusion that gardens all need some level of shade, but it was really hard for me to test it because everywhere that I could grow at was partially shady. Um, so this sort of sort of supports that because it's, you know, really, really, these are not very healthy looking uh, turnips over in here. So, but just right over in here where it is in the shade more are other turnips. These are all planted the same day. Same turnips, same treatments to the soil. Everything's the same. And like here we have a very, very... I'm just going to pick it because I want to eat it as a snack. A very large turnip. So that's going to be that's going to be tasty. Um, but so, yeah, that's about all that's been going on with the garden. Um, everything in the perennial bed over here is doing well. It looks like a jungle because, well, it kind of is. Um, but... The mints are all spreading, they're all taking over like they're supposed to, so are the strawberries, which is, you know, really exciting. Um, so yeah, that's that's about it. Um, back towards the back there, we do have a lot of different um, winter squashes coming up and working on trellising. Um, eventually, there'll be a much better trellis and it'll look really cool and I can show you guys on camera and be like, look how cool this looks. But as it is right now, it looks kind of kind of just straggly and unplanned, but eventually it'll take over. But so that's it for tonight. I gotta get those beans picked before it gets dark because it actually, I think I have about an hour left of daylight and it's gonna take me a good a good little while to get that done. So anyways, if you guys are enjoying this content, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends on social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to help us grow. We'd greatly appreciate it. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys.